Hey folks, Brian Blessing here in Las Vegas. Here we go, second leg of the Triple Crown. Time for our Preakness preview. Follow me on Twitter, Brian Blessing. And of course, listen to the Sports Betting Podcast. Broke the race down uh, with our good friend, Adam Burke. All right, let's get going. We'll do what we did with the Kentucky Derby. And we were darn close to hitting the home run, but then maximum security got taken down. Uh, let's go through the field. In rapid fashion, War of Will, Gaff Leone back aboard, the number one on the board at 4-1. to one. Why didn't Tyler Gaffleyon claim foul in the derby? He was the one that was hit. I think Gaffleyon, uh, you know, he's steady and then ran alongside and flattened out. Wasn't going to get the distance. So I think there may be some chinks in the armor here for War of Will. Bourbon War is a sneaky horse. Number two is on the board, 12 to 1. Comes out of the Florida Derby. Ran against maximum security. Ran against Code of Honor. They're not in this race. So Bourbon War, I think is a price play that can hit the board. The number two for trainer Mark Henning and love the rider, Irad Ortiz. Number three is Warriors Charge. Brad Cox is going to have a say in the outcome of this race. This one could get to the front and not look back, but I think there's tons of speed. I do think a speed duel is brewing 12-1. to 1. Gotta love Castellano in the irons. Improbable Mike Smith is the favorite. 5-2 to two for Bob Baffert. This one finished fifth in the Derby. You know, the one thing is, since leaving Santa Anita, I think the course... Horse it runs big every time, but has a real severe case of second eyes. I just don't think the horse likes to win, but you got to use it in your exotic wagers. I do think the now horse is Owendale, the number five. Now, this horse could just run right out because it's coming off a career best 98 buyer figure in the Lexington, but the middle move this horse made was eye popping. And I think Brad Cox, he's also got the number three Warriors charge in this race that could set it up for the closer, Owendale. And Florent Giroux is aboard. Three-year-olds in a weak three-year-old crop. This could be a late bloomer. I think Owendale has a chance. Uh, would be my top pick to win this event. Mark King is the sixth with John Court aboard for Wayne Lucas. Has speed, but not a lot of it. Uh, always Mining is one that has tons of speed. Six-race winning streak, but on the Maryland circuit. And I just don't think this one is as quick as Warriors Charge, but could end up Getting a battle brewing on the front end. I just don't see Centeno sticking around here with all these mining. Signal Man is the eight. Brian Hernandez for Ken McPeak. This is a trainer that can get a horse turned around. Don't sleep on anything Ken McPeak sends to post. Seems like a tall order to uh, do something here, but does come out of the Fountain Youth and the Bluegrass. Bodie Express uh, was showing some pretty good speed in the Kentucky Derby. Did falter and finish 14th, the number nine but picks up John Velasquez here at 20 to 1, is another one that could produce a speed duel. And generally speaking, at a mile and a 3 16 this is a race that favors horses on the front end. This is a bizarre year with the Derby winner out, and I really think that this race could collapse. Ever fast is the number 10 at 50 to 1. On paper, looks like it has no shot, but what's Dale Romans thinking here? Oh, by the way, Joel Rosario's aboard. They must think something's in the offing here because the form is just not good. Number 11 is Laughing Fox. Santana's aboard for Steve Asmussen. He's the go-to rider for Asmussen. Uh, 20 to 1. This is one that's been based uh, in Oaklawn and is a stone-cold closer. Another twist of fate is the number 12 with Jose Ortiz aboard for trainer Blaine Wright. You know, this one, runner-up in the Sunland Derby, and then you had uh, Cutting Humor who... Won that race, didn't really do much, but again, it was a sloppy track in the Derby, and then comes off a runner-up finish to Owendale uh, in the Lexington. Uh, I, I think Owendale has much more upside uh, than another twist of fate. And then here's the one. Win, win, win. In my Derby preview, I was convinced this horse was going to be in the top four, round out the Supers, the tries, and I just, I've got to go on the premise that this horse did not like the sloppy going at Churchill Downs. Back in Maryland, all the races were at Laurel, but Pimlico, I, maybe the horse is kind of acclimated to the surroundings here. And Pimentel knows this course, the rider. He's a Maryland-based jockey. I think the fast track could make all the difference in the world. And if this race completely collapses, I, I think win-win-win is in the exotics again and maybe could even get up. Because honestly, I would have thought they maybe shelve the horse and save him up, freshen him up for the Belmont. Uh, but turning back in distance, a touch here, but on a fast track, and there is speed to run at. I think win-win-win, again, 
is got an opportunity to be a factor. So Owendale's going to be my top pick, the number five. I think uh, the number two, uh, Bourbon War, freshened coming out of the Florida Derby, could be a factor. And you got to use improbable underneath. Clearly, uh, with Mike Smith aboard for Baffert and the connections, the horse is extremely consistent. And then the 13, win, 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 going with the five, Owendale on top in what is a very unique Preakness without the Derby winner uh, who be, won't be competing. Uh, you're just going to see a weird race and maybe a great betting race where the Preakness is generally not uh, a race that can produce a big day payday. This race very well could.